Welcome to the channel guys, this is RR37, my name is Rich and we are back with another episode, finally, of this Roma rebrand career mode. It has been far too long and it feels great to do that short little intro again. Um, it's been, like I said, a while, I cannot remember what's gone on previous to this really at all. Um, I, we're obviously coming towards January, which is going to be a big, big month in the history of this club. We've not spent any money yet, so it's kind of almost we can't delay it anymore. We're coming to a decision that is going to shape the future of this club, basically. We could end up losing players in January, and that could be catastrophic in a way, because we are not in a position yet where we can replace anyone so um we're looking pretty okay in the league by the looks of that i just noticed that uh, we do have an extra game on inter but we are five points clear of them so that's good um we'll probably take a look at the league at some point in this episode i would imagine um i remember seeing that there as well that pedro's had a great start to the season um, we're doing pretty well as a team on the pitch actually, um, but we've made no progress at all yet in developing the club any further than what it was on day one really. Um, so as we're going through the training and everything else, um, in this episode what I want to take a look at is our wage structure. Um, that could be handy to know as January is coming up. Um, probably a little look at the in-game board objectives obviously just to redress ours all that we wanted to do this season we've done most of it already we secure players onto a longer term of contract uh, we've got them to take pay cuts as well majority of them which is a big bonus um, um, what else that was leading somewhere um, you can tell I've not done this for a while um, yeah, we're going to look, and obviously, yeah, that was it, to get ourselves into some kind of European football, be that Europa League, be that Champions League. That's really our only goals, and of course, we want to take at least one step forward per season. Um, so, we have got big, big decisions coming up as the game against Sassuolo starts to rear its head. Um, also, in terms of games today... Um, I'm not too sure how many we're going to do. Uh, this one is running against a little bit of time. So uh, we'll see how that develops. And of course we've got a lot of off the stuff pitch to manage as well. Um, so yeah, that's where we are at the moment. We're going to take a look at our wage structure. We're just going to address what the game wants us to do. Because obviously even though we're coming from the point of view of the board in this save we lose our job because of the in-game board then the whole save is dead basically so we do have to address what they want us to do as well and um, yeah let's jump in then uh, I think that's enough talking and we'll crack on with what we've got planned for this episode so we're going to start off um, looking at what the game wants us to do in terms of its objectives it's probably a good idea because I can't remember I, it's been too long and where we are actually with what they want as well. Obviously, we don't have a youth academy open at the moment. And that's not really that big an issue, if I'm being honest. Because it's low priority anyway. It's not really going to determine whether the game sacks us or not, basically. So, I'm okay with that one. Obviously, the youth development is part of the plan going forward. Um... So there's a decision to be made on how soon we address that or whether we address other areas of the club first. So it is important to us, but it's not important to the game. It's not going to get us sacked. So I'm quite happy with that the way that it is. As for brand exposure, which we're going to have a look at next, I believe there was a certain amount of games that we had to win on this one and was there a signing that had to be made um, I can't remember let's just click over and have a look at it and we'll discuss it from there um, for us for brand exposure um, it's kind of more the continental success thing for us though um, getting into Europe is what's gonna for me build the brand as well as 
obviously the style of football we play, how exciting we are and all this, that and the other. But for the game, we're actually almost there. The wanted 20 win, so yeah, it was a number that we had to win. We're at 15 already. We've not reached January yet, so I feel pretty confident that we'll get that one done. And signing the young player again. See, this is a high priority, so do we go against the grain and open a youth academy, which is what, for me, makes logical sense, or do we follow what the game wants and sign somebody, which means we would have to open up that side of the club first. Um, I suppose, in a way, it would depend on how we're doing, whether we're going to get that night, uh, that 20 wins or what, and we could decide from there a bit later on. The Europa League, they actually want us to win, which, for me... I'm not too sure we can do that. We're in the first season. We don't know what's going to happen um, through next month. How many players we're going to lose? Are we actually going to lose any? Um, so many unanswered questions. So, continental success for me, what I want. Again, this is a high priority as well, which is a bit worrying. Is for us to just be in Europe next season. That would be continental success for me. Even though, again... That would probably fall under the domestic success in the game. Um, so yeah, that that could be a tough one because that is a high priority. Brand exposure, high priority. Um, this could really shape the decision making process. Um, let's have a look at domestic success and what they want us to do there. Um, Reaching the Coppa Italia quarterfinals, I mean, that should be achievable. We're in the round of 16 already, um, so I literally, yeah, it's just one more round. We've just got to win one round in that. That's absolutely fine. Now, as for Champions League place, at the moment, things are looking quite rosy for that. But again, January could literally just come and wipe out everything and we could really begin to struggle from there depending what players that we might or might not lose so the game again it's a high priority which is a real issue the game wants champions league for me personally as long as we are playing european football next season that was the goal from the outset and i'm not gonna divert from that really um financial we've got coming up next um why are we going back to a continental success there? Um, that must have been something that was going on with my pad. Um, yeah, financial success. I believe, for me personally, coming from the point of view of the owner, again, in this save, I believe we've already done that. Um, we've got the wage bill down. We've got everyone on much longer term contracts. Um, I think we are really, really stable. Um We've sold two of the three players that want us to sell, and we've got January coming up. And, um, yeah, finish the season without any unspent transfer budget. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but as for the two players, we literally... Oh, we've got to sign a crucial player as well. See, that kind of ties in with what they want with the brand exposure. But it doesn't really tie in with what we're looking to do here. This could actually become a bit of a problem <laughs> because they're all medium and high and I don't see us winning the Europa League. That's not me being defeatist, that's just we're in our first season and with January. I suppose it depends on January really, how, actu how that actually pans out. Um, getting into a Champions League place would be really, really difficult. For the domestic success one. Um, after January. I anticipate things are going to get a lot harder. Because we've got players in form. I imagine that there's going to be clubs. Sniffing around for those players. And um, to keep the integrity. Of the series. Obviously I would sell them. Because that's where we are at the moment. Um, so yeah. Champions League. I'm just not sure. We've put ourselves in a really strong position to do that. I would say that. 
the brand exposure we've nearly done the winning of the games but we're probably not going to sign anyone again it really we don't have that much money to spend i don't even know i can't remember if we've got enough money to even open a part of the club up at the moment or whether that can only happen if somebody does leave in january that's something we'll be checking out shortly but um for now uh, I'm not too confident that we're going to pass any of these. Maybe, just maybe, the domestic success. But is that going to be enough? Uh, who knows? We've still got a whole half the season to go yet. So, only time will tell how things pan out. But next we're going to have a look at... Um, yeah, next we're going to have a look at the decision that could be coming up. And that is our Youth Academy. Remember, from left to right, 50 million, 100 million, 150 million to have these. The left one means we can only scout in our home country, Italy. The middle one means that we can look in Europe. The right one, the most expensive, means we can look anywhere that we want. Same again, 50 million for the two left ones to be opened. 100 million for the middle ones um, and 150 million for the right ones. That I'm going to base just for simplicity sakes. Um, we can only scout players in Serie A or yeah, Italy basically with a 250 million. We can only scout players in Europe, the major Europeans, the Premier League, Bundesliga, La Liga and stuff like that with the middle one. And again, the most expensive one, the right one. We can scout players from wherever we like. Um... What I would say is there's going to be no cheating here. Uh, we have to have them in stages as well. They have to be sequential. We can't just go 150 million, open that right up, and then it would make no sense to do that. It has to go from left to right. Um, I said, mentioned the wage budget, so I just want to have a look here. Um, who is our highest paid player and how much are they on? And that would be Florenzi, who is actually not even at the club at the moment, on 55k. So, if we were to go that way, and we were to start looking at players in our league, we can't go above the 55,000 mark, basically, on wages. Um, so, that's going to restrict us as well. These are not going to be permanent things, but obviously, at the moment, keeping it realistic we have just spent all of our money on the club so we have to get it into a position where we can then go and get more expensive players and that if you like um, but for the moment we've got to work within a really tight budget so that's where we are at the moment so 55k is as high as we can go um Looking down at the rest, there's actually quite a big jump between Florenzi and Pedro, and then, say, Pedro and Mayoral. So we've done really well, actually, on uh, on the wages. When we was doing all of those contracts, we've done a really good job there, so happy with that. Next, we're going to take a look at the league, which we are actually leading at the moment. And we've done that really in a defensive nature. We've won 15 of our 17 games, as you can see, which is quite mind-blowing, actually. I did not expect that. We scored 42 goals in 17 games. Again, not too bad, but to have conceded just 6 in 17 games, that is actually quite phenomenal. And that is what most of our success has been based around. As you look at Inter, they've scored 39 goals. That's only, what, 3 less than us. But it's the goals conceded where we're ahead at the moment, like far ahead as well. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping that if people do come in for players of ours in January, that they're not going to be coming for defenders. Because uh, that has been the building blocks of our success at the moment. Muscle memory is telling me as well that we've defended quite well because in our games up to this point we've enjoyed a lot of the ball so that's something that we definitely need to continue doing and very very soon now we have got this Sassuolo game coming up before we tackle that though uh, we're going to have a look at the calendar and see what else we do have coming up in today's episode um, again I can't remember how many games we actually went through so let's just look at the month basically um, we got Sassuolo, obviously we've seen that. 
We've got Napoli coming up, which is going to be a heck of a tough game. Um, Benevento in the cup makes me feel like, without getting ahead of myself, we should definitely be reaching that objective and beating those to go through to the quarterfinals of the Coppa Italia, which would go a long way to completing that objective. We've also got Parma. Then we've got Benevento again this month. And then we've got Udinese to finish January off. So what is most likely to happen here is... I would look at this normally. I don't know if this is going to happen, by the way. But um, I would split the month. There's six games. So I would split the month into two parts. Especially with it being January as well. So that's probably what is going to happen and we have made that fateful click and here we go now and that is not good news Verona have recalled Kambula that is not good news at all especially with the fact that we're still in Europe I believe and we've got the Copper Italia starting now as well we really need our squad players and what did I say about defenders as well I do like Kambula, um, but well, he's gone, so what can I do? Um, his parent club have called him back. They did say that we weren't playing him enough. Um, since then, I feel like I've tried to get him into the team more, but obviously, no. Um, Fazio's gone, Perez has gone, Pastore is gone as well, so we have just lost quite a few players there and a lot of them and what was I just saying are in the defensive positions and that could really destabilize us now going forward what have we got left here we've still got Dzeko um, still got Mickey at the moment Pellegrini, Veritao, Diawara um, Pedro thankfully Spinozola we've got Jesus and Smalling which is my most trusted partnership anyway we do still have Santon. We've got Mancini still as well. Ibanez is still here. So we've still got enough cover in that area, I feel. We can even always play Cristant. I believe his stats would be okay to put in defence. I think we might have done that a couple of times as well. Um, if not, it's in games that I've not edited the videos for yet. So there's a little spoiler there, I suppose. Um, but yeah, uh, we're a little lighter now, that's for sure. Um, going into the business end of the season, it's not ideal. But we're a new club. Um, and yeah, we've got to find our feet. Um, it has ticked us over the 50 million. Um, so we can make a decision at some point in this episode on whether or not we're going to... Um, spend this money opening up a youth academy or spending it on getting a scouting division a scouting network and opening that side of the club up um yeah decisions decisions but i feel like before we make any hasty decisions there we should probably if i was doing this now this is like me talking to my past self i don't know what i've done I would probably give it till the end of January before making a decision there and seeing how things play out, but only time is going to tell on what decision we actually make and if we do it now, if we do do it at the end of January or anything like that. But for now, let's just advance together, see if anything else happens before this game comes up. My pad's having a fit once again there. Um, yeah, see if anything else unexpected pops up before this Sassuolo game. Um, hopefully, no more defenders. We're not going to get anything by the looks of that. So, at least going into this game, we've got the squad that we've got left to try and tackle Sassuolo away. And um, this is a game that I definitely feel on paper at least. But I can tell you going into this game that um, Sassuolo in their last three games have only lost to Inter they have actually won their other two they beat Fiorentina and Calderi on the way to us and uh, that 4-2-3-1 wide is something that it's a system that's quite difficult to break down I'm a fan of Locatelli in their centre midfield as well so he'd be someone to watch out for on our side of things when going with our strongest 11 what I feel is our strongest at the moment anyway 
we're not going to take any chances. So as you can see, we've got Jekyll up front. We've got Mickey up front. Pellegrini, Diawar and Veratout, the midfield trio. We've got uh, Pedro on the outside. Obviously, we need to keep getting him involved with the form he's in at the moment. Smalling's going to captain the squad today. We've got Lopez in goal. Karsdorp at right wing. Jesus, uh, partner in Smalling, I mentioned it earlier, is my most trusted centre-back partnership at the moment. And we've got Spinozola at left-back. Everyone's fully fit. Um, so I am expecting a win today. Whether we'll get it, though, um, is a different thing. This is sort of going to be the game that breaks me back in after a very, very long time. So we'll see what we can do. And also, it is in the snow. And what I did for this as well um, was make this game highlights because I fully expect us to get the win. Um, and yeah, the video is running 20 minutes already and we've not even played any football yet, which is uh, my fault. But I don't, I still, you could comment it really and it would really help to know whether you guys like the longer videos or you prefer them to be short and sweet. Um, Definitely drop that in the comments below and it will give me a clue as we go into next season. Um, because one thing that I would say now is I can't remember what goes on in these games because I recorded them just so I was still doing something with the channel uh, behind the scenes while I've been doing everything else that I've been trying to keep on top of as well. And the whole of season one has been recorded. So anything that you comment uh, about the length of the videos and this, that and the other is something that would be addressed in Season 2. So plenty of time to get them comments in, even if it's not that video, this video and you watch others, um, just leave them in there. I, I will definitely see them, I'll definitely respond and act accordingly. But uh, yeah, for this game at the moment, I believe that I took my eye off it for a second that we've just took the lead there. And Jekko has indeed doubled that lead. Um, I think win 2 0 up. Anyway, uh, I've got carried away with the length of the video thing. Uh, we might just have to see at the end oh, what a mess this one has been. Um, yeah, we're not very happy about that finishing ability there. 67 minutes in now. Smalling trying to put his man off there. Has he done it successfully? That looks very close. I actually thought that was going in. Smalling doing just enough to put him off. Here we go now. 74 minutes in. I see the guy open on the right. It's Pedro, of course. Surely this is going to be a goal then. As soon as it left his boot, you could just see the shape on the ball. Pedro adding to his very impressive start this season. And I think that... I thought that was it, but no. Uh, but I get one more attack. Oh... No, Jesus got took out of the game there. And yeah, I don't. What is the final result? Oh, it's 4 1. That's not too bad then. Um, I'd have prefer, I'd have liked a clean sheet. Okay, so that was a bit of a mess from a commentary point of view, but at least on the pitch it wasn't a mess. We'd done really well there as a game to get back into it. A nice 4 1 away win. It was expected, but. Uh, it's definitely we need to keep ticking these points over um, if we're going to qualify for the Champions League which is what the game wants uh, even if we're going to qualify for the Europa League at the moment it's only the midpoint of the season we've lost a lot of players already there's still a lot of the month to go yet so yeah certainly nothing is done nothing's in the bag yet and we have got one hell of a tough game coming up now it's saying at the moment that Napoli are 8th in the league, but they are such a good side. On their day, they could turn up and beat anyone, so we've got to be really on it. Um, feeling somewhat confident after the last game uh, to score four goals straight off when you're coming back is not a bad thing. So, yeah, we're, uh, we're pretty in good form at the moment, and can we compete for the title now? Um... For me, and I know this sounds defeatist, we're not in the title race at the moment. Um, maybe I'll feel differently about that after January and we can see what players that we've got left. But as things stand right now, I think it would be way too early to say that we're in a title race. 
and will we have Napoli worried? Um, that's not really our concern, to be honest. We've just got to focus on what we do, what we can do. Uh, I am fully, fully expecting a really difficult game here, so I'm not going to be disrespecting them in any way. Um, people, again, th expecting us to make big signings. Um, yeah, we're just not in that we're not in that point yet we're not at that point I should say I can't really get my words out right now the way that I would like to um, yeah we're just not as a club in a position where we've got enough staff departments whatever you want to say to even consider signing players yet unless we were to just now go and open that side of the club up or a youth academy uh, even if we did that we won't get no players from a month from the day that it's open for the Youth Academy. Or if we spend that money now um, and open that side of the club up, we've still got uh, to sign players. We've still not got enough money to go and sign anyone anyway. So, yeah, at the moment, um, we are where we are. This is what the league looks like after that round. Inter have caught up on games with us now and are only two points behind us. Juventus still not that far behind either, and this is what I'm saying about the title race. They're only seven points behind. Uh, where we are looking really, for my personal goals, is six, and we still have a quite healthy lead over Torino at the moment, so I'm quite happy with where we sit. And with that in mind, let's have a look now at what we're going to be taking Napoli on with. Um, we're going to go full strength again. Uh, why change it? Nobody's tired, too tired to play or anything like that. They've got a Simeon up front, Insigne, Lozano, Mertens, Bakioko, Fabian, uh, Ospina in goal. Yeah, they're going to pose a real threat. This is going to be a really, really difficult game. Especially the fact that we're playing in the snow once again. It might make me feel like actually that Napoli should be in a different kit, I want to say. Um, don't know about that. We'll look into that. Um, if I was doing it now, again, I would probably change the colour of their kit. And so here is the game against Napoli. Uh, they're on the attack straight away. Insigne, Megzis, Lopez and it looks for all the world. And it is indeed... Like we go down 1-0, not a great start at all. It is highlights because I want the main game today to be the kickoff of the Coppa Italia and we're already at this point nearly half an hour into the video. But um, back into the game, don't want to miss anything this time. It looked there like Pellegrini might have got us back in but it's a great block from the defender. Another bit of time goes by, Pellegrini looks to his right, it, uh, his left sorry, there's nothing there so takes the shot and drags it well wide. Nine minutes to go. Zaniolo into the game. Uh, slides and nothing doing there. This is not looking good guys. I honestly do not know this result so yeah. Uh, oh no they're on the attack. 90 minutes in. Bad deflection surely not at the near. It is at the near post and wow. We have taken our first L of the season and it's at home. That hurts. That really, really hurts. And so we take our first press conference on the losing side of things. So let's see what we are going to get asked today. Um, finally, we have tasted defeat. Uh, how do we reflect on that? Um, to be completely honest, at this point it's hard to say because the game was played so long ago. But as for the run itself, it's been great for belief. That's a great answer. Um, going out the way we did, I can't really comment on at the time. But if I did click that, which I have, then it mustn't have been a great display from us, is all I can say. Um, and not a good result and made worse by the fact it was against Napoli. Yeah, uh, I feel that. It was a crushing defeat. Um, well, it damaged confidence. It has the potential to. When teams in sports have gone on long unbeaten runs in in any sport, really, um, you always hear it, it the keys momentum. 
So that loss could actually really, really derail us. I hope that's not the case, but it could. It definitely could. And we subbed off Jekyll early today. If that's happened, then he wasn't playing well. It's as simple as that. And uh, I would be clicking now that I want to see a reaction from him. And that's exactly what I do do. And... Um, yeah, Jekyll's got to pick himself up off the floor. We've yes, subbed him uh, many times, sometimes for a rest, other times when he's played bad. And uh, it's helped, so hopefully that's something that will happen again. But this cup game here, it's come at exactly the right time. And, oh, this is not good. Um... Even as his parent club are threatening to call him back now. So, uh, for more than one reason then, this game has come at the right time. Oh. Well, that's nice. They didn't even get us give us a chance to pick him, so... We're not going to have Ibanez for this game then. Uh, he would have played today as well, for sure. That's, um, yeah, another defender gone out the door. And that is really, really not good. But, um, yeah, we've just got to continue on. We've got to focus on what we have here. There is a few tired legs going into this game, so maybe we do rotate here. Um, Benevento rocking that 4-3-2-1 that I've only ever really seen Rangers use. But, yeah, we are going to rotate for this. It is a cup game. We only need to get through this round to complete what the board wants as well, so... Um, we're going with Mayoral, we're going with Perez, Zaniola, we, uh, Zaniolo, sorry, we're going to bring Villar back in. Pedro's going to stay in, of course, and take over the armband. Um, with Smalling coming out. Um, who are we going to put in defence now is the question. Mancini obviously can have a game. Um, Santon as well. I think we're going to have to play Karsdorp and Jesus. Um, could we give Califori a game, potentially? Um, yes, yes, we can indeed. And looking at it now, I'd have probably just played Mirant in this game. And, oh, there you go. That's exactly what we do. So, pretty much a full rotation there. Hopefully it's not going to cost us. Uh, coming off the back of a win, we need a reaction now. Um, we're not playing in snow, which is a big bonus. And let's just go out there and see if we can get ourselves into the quarterfinals. Okay, so here we go then. It is the round of 16 in the Coppa Italia. It is us. It is Benevento. This game, like I said has come at just the right time. We need to bounce back. We have to go through. Um, Pedro's going to receive the ball here. Yeah, we need to just get back on winning ways immediately. Not that that loss get to us. Continue playing the football that we've been playing, and I think we will be absolutely fine. Um, oh, could be an earlier mayoral. No. Unfortunately, that comes to nothing. Uh, Villar's recycled that really well though. Chris Stant straight into Mauro. And weren't the greatest ball to be honest to Perez there. Can we win it back again high up though? Villar again. What a start to the game he's had. We've got an overload here as well. Oh, I should have played that into Pedro with a left foot maybe. Or oh, gone for the shot. We should have done something there. Maybe we're just a little rocked at the moment after that Napoli game. And we've got a... Just pick those confidence levels back up again. Being a little bit less risky, probably, than usually. Oh, this does not look great at all. Overloads for Benevento this time. Oh, what a challenge that is. Was that Santon that did that? Mayoral's gone now. We've got Perez as well. Oh, it's not picked him. We've still got the ball, though. Still moving it nicely. This could be a goal here. Check back in, get it to Zaniolo, but it's cut out. And yeah, first 15 minutes, it's kind of been us huffing and puffing, but we've not really done anything of note at the moment. Not forced the keeper into a save. Hopefully we can change that here. The ball, the tempo, the ball movement, I'm pretty happy with at the moment. Uh, again, that was meant for Mayoral there. Didn't really come off. Santon now. 
Zaniolo back to Santon. Oh, nice first touch from Santon. And he scored as well. He's not who I would have put my money on to open the scoring in this game. But we've had a really good opening 20 minutes. We definitely deserve to be in front. We finally found our way in. And Santon makes no mistake. No mistake at all. Nice little give and go. But that first touch there has just opened up the room for him. And he has smacked that one home. Uh, we see it from a better angle. He's really just leathered that uh, keeper. No chance really. And there's a bit of relief in there probably after the Napoli game. Uh, that we're just going to get right back on the horse and start winning again. And uh, obviously Joy as well. We've took the lead in a cup game. And uh, yeah, we've took the first steps towards getting to the quarterfinals hopefully. But there is still a long, long way to go in this one yet. Yeah. A little bit of an overcut on my part here. It was supposed to be half an hour, but we're 33 minutes in, so not a lot has happened since we scored the goal. We've gone into what we've been doing all season, and oh, what a ball that is. Let's just hold that thought for a minute. Great first touch from Pedro, and of course, of course, he does what he does best, and he just scores another goal this season. Great spin from him. Captain today as well, of course. Leading by example, it was a beautiful cutting ball out to him. He still had a lot to do though, Pedro. Um, you see it here, that first touch has took the defender out of the game, gets it out of his feet and bang at the near post. And the way that we've been playing uh, for the first half hour or so, uh, this lead could grow. I don't see Benevento getting back into the game at this point. I definitely would say that. Um, yeah, I'm really impressed with the response actually after that loss to Napoli. It'll work to do in this half though, Benevento uh, pushing forward probably for the first time in this match actually. Uh, Chris Stant's done really well there though. Zaniolo with a ball out to Perez who's got a lot of room. He's also got Mayoralia, great first touch, he smoked the defenders. He's got Pedro on his right, uses him and Pedro just... Just about slots that one in and that is definitely us going through to the next round. We were really close to stuffing that up there. Uh, I thought there'd be a much more convincing finish from Pedro, not going to lie. We've created the space well. And yeah, uh, keeper's unlucky there, I've got to say it. You see it from a uh, better angle here. He does actually get to it, the keeper, but he just can't keep it out. And that is Pedro on the score sheet once again for his second goal in the Coppa Italia. Next landmark moment in the game, the 60 minute mark. Villa on the edge of the box here. We've got them pinned all the way back. They just can't do nothing against us, Benevento. He's Perez and it's four. And it's game. And we're going through to the next round. And we're ticking that. Uh, that objective off Pe uh, Perez was not going to jump over the flag like Pedro. Uh, yeah, we've just absolutely demolished Benevento. Absolutely no relief now. It is all just joy. It's uh, how many do we want to score basically now. We're just absolutely picking them apart. Perez here lets it run across him. Catches it really nicely actually. And uh, yeah, keeper no chance. I think that's his second as well I want to say. I um, can't fully remember if he got the first or not. But um, anyways, that is 4-0 and that is definitely us through now. I don't know if we want to make any changes really because we've already got the rotation out there. We could maybe bring Pedro off but that's it and we could be on for another. We look really in the mood today. Uh, they've caught us at a bad time, Benevento, after that loss to Napoli. There you see the Palmer game next. That's what I'm thinking about with Pedro here. Oh, beautiful little ball roll and it's 5 Hat trick for Pedro, man of the match for Pedro, and uh, I'll say it again, us through to the next round. It's just 10 minutes to go in this one now. Benevento on a rare venture forward again. Last time they did this, it cost them a goal. Uh, we won the ball back and counted, obviously, for one of ours. Oh, that's nice from Jesus, but it weren't the greatest ball out, if I'm being honest. Here they come again now. Calfori, who's not played before today, can't get to the ball. And it is a consolation goal for Benevento. It's not really going to change anything. 
disappointing because uh, like I said we've been keeping so many clean sheets but we don't have the players that we had in the defence now um, when we roll tight obviously so this kind of thing I suppose is to be expected really um, but yeah it's still not nice on a side note guys what I do want to say is that uh, this game will be the end of this episode Again, I apologise for the big, big gap. It's not the way I wanted this save to go. Um, I've been so looking forward to this being joined up and cohesive. Coming out every day pretty much like the Borough career did. Um, but at the moment, it's life and it's just it's not been able to happen. Hopefully by the time we get to uh, bringing out Season 2, that that will be different. Um, but yeah, this is going to end this episode, so the whole point of that really was to thank you for your patience and your loyalty while I've not been uploading. Um, it means a great, great deal, honestly. This is what I want to do, um, but obviously uh, I don't have the financial that I need to be able to do this full time, if that makes sense. I don't want to go on a ramble. Um, Basically, all I'm saying is I just absolutely love doing this. I've missed doing it. So happy to be back. Hopefully there won't be no big gaps this time, but I'm not going to make promises that I can't keep. Um, but that is the end of the game, and like I said, that is going to signal the end of the episode. I hope you've all enjoyed it. It's been a bit of a mess, this one, compared to normal, but again, I've just got to re relearn the things that um, I was picking up along the way. We'll get there. Uh, I'm just going to enjoy this for now. Uh, hopefully you guys will too. Again, about the length of the videos, comment that down below. Comment what you've liked and uh, not liked as well. Uh, constructive criticism does help to improve, obviously. Um, and to know what you guys like to see in the videos helps as well. But again, I'm just going to leave it there, guys, until the next one. So enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.